hello everyone and welcome back to my channel today's topic is we are going to go over the hydraulic system um, I want to I want to simplify the hydraulic system for you guys so that uh, when you guys are doing the pre-flight and all the prep flying this airplane you're not just flying it out of uh, your uh, you know habit or just from something that someone has told you to do um, you actually understand what is going on and how the switches that you are pressing um, are linked to the actual systems on the airplane so let's uh, get into the cockpit and let's start reviewing this real quick so <clears throat> first of all if you want to pull up the hydraulics page out here you need to go to this panel right here and press the HYD button and if you click that that should bring up your full hydraulic uh, system circuit diagram right here so in the grand scheme of things, PMDG 777 or 777 is equipped with three hydraulic fluid reservoirs, which are these three boxes right here. And the values that you see in here are the normalized uh, fluid levels. So if it is one, that means it's full. I think somewhere in the 0.75 range is when it'll, sh it'll show an RF in the stat page. So here it says 0.97, but if it was less, it would have shown RF, which means refilling. So if you have to refill the hydraulic fluid, you go into the EFB, ground maintenance, and hit refill hydraulic fluids. And that should refill these three hydraulic fluid reservoirs for you. But anyway, right now we are seeing that the hydraulic uh, fluid reservoirs are full, so there's no problem there. And the pressure is 50, 50, 50 PSI gauge. So that means it is not pressurized right now. Ideally, uh, this would show up as 3000 PSI G if any of these systems were pressurized and working. Anyway, so now, now we know that we have these three reservoirs, right? And for from each of these reservoirs, different uh, different functions are being uh, accomplished. So for example, from reservoir one, that is linked to the flight controls. So our aileron and um, elevators and all that. And it is also linked to the left engine reversers, right? Because reversers also need the hydraulic system to kind of push that cowling behind and then um, um, get some reverse thrust, thrust in. So that's what's linked to the left hydraulic uh, fluid reservoir. For the right one, again, it's the same thing. It's flight control, it's a right reverser, and it's also normal brakes, so the main, main landing gate brakes. Same way you have the center reservoir, which is linked to nose gear and steering, alternate brakes, uh, flaps, and main gear and steering. So now you'd know that if any of these would go bad, what would stop working? If, let's say, you don't have the left hydraulic system working, then you wouldn't have um, left reversers working. The flight control is redundant on on the uh, middle tank as well. So the flight control will controls will still keep working. Anyway, so now we know in the grand scheme of things how and what is controlled by which hydraulic system here, right? Now, how do we pump this fluid that's there in the reservoir to these um, actuators that we have at the end and I'm talking in very simple terms so that everyone can understand it right so for that we have the primary and secondary secondary is what is called demand up here right so primary pumps when we talk about primary pumps for the first for the left hydraulic system you have the left engine primary pump and you have the electric demand pump so when you don't have the engine running you would be using the electric demand pump to push the hydraulic fluid to wherever it's required. Same way for the right one, again, you have the right electric and the right engine. So let's review the left and right switches first. Okay, so let's go on to our overhead panel, right? So for the left engine driven primary pump, that switch is right here. So it stays on, but it's showing a fault message because our engine is not on. Same way for the right engine, it is on, but the fault light is on as well because the engine is not on. The demand pump on the other side has two, two switch positions. One is auto and one is on. So when it's left on auto, the system will prefer flowing the hydraulic fluid through the primary pump 
but when the primary pump is inoperative it will automatically turn on the electrical pump and flow the hydraulic fluid through that electrical uh, side of the circuit so let's try turning this to auto real quick for both left and right electric hydraulic fluids the fault light has extinguished that means that there is no problem in the in the demand pump system let's go back here and let's see what's going on so if you look at this closely you will see that now we have a green line going through the demand pump to the flight controls and left reversers and to the flight controls and right reversers so if i go back to the wing view here you will see that now if i move my joystick i'm able to control my ailerons nicely right i have full control over my ailerons this hydraulic uh, fluid is being transferred through the demand pump because the engine is not on as soon as the engine turns on this uh, uh, this line will turn green and you will have all of the hydraulic fluid flowing through the uh, engine driven hydraulic pump so that clears out how the hydraulic system works for the left and right and then we'll go through how it works on the center one real quick here okay so one uh, one other thing about the demand pumps is uh, if if the requirement of hydraulic fluid is higher at the receiving end then it will also use the demand pump along with the primary engine pump on both sides so let's say you're using brakes during takeoff and also during um, landing you'll have reversers and flight controls everything needs hydraulic fluid so if if more hydraulic fluid is needed then you'll have both primary and demand on but that's um, that's that's an automatic logic that is that is there in the system so it decides whether it has whether it needs the assist from the demand pump or not based on the requirement from the from the um, control surface or the actuator side okay so we went through the left and right system now let's go through the center system so basically you guys now understand these two lines uh, and these two lines out here the SOV is just a shutoff valve so the shutoff valve is open right now so it shows up green on both sides but if the shutoff valve was closed this line would be um, uh, perpendicular to the current green line and it would show up as white I believe Anyway, let's come to the center hydraulic uh, um, hydraulic system. Now again, you see here the pressure has risen to 3000 and that's because uh, we have turned on the electrical demand pumps. Since we have the ground power unit connected, it's able to provide the electrical power. If we did not have any power on the aircraft and just had uh, batteries, then that, this would not work. So, okay. Finally, let's come to the center um, uh, center one now. So for the center one, we have C1 and C2 electric primary pumps. So let's go up here. These are both air. So let's turn on the C1. That light should extinguish. And then let's turn on C2. All right, so both of the lights are extinguished. Let's go back to our display here. So now you'll see that we are powering everything that needs to be powered through the center hydraulic system through these primary electrical pumps. And then you have demand pumps, but in the center hydraulic system, the demand pumps are air pumps. So these are air driven. Now this air can come in either from the APU or it can come in from the engine. So let's try starting the APU and let's see what happens to these. So I'm going to turn the APU knob to on and then start. Okay, so we have the APU running now and you will see that the yellow excess that we had for both C1 and C2 demand pumps for the center hydraulic system are now gone. So if needed, the hydraulic fluid can be passed through the uh, demand air pumps. Right now, we are not using the airplane for anything, so it's it's not needed. But you, if you if you keep the screen on during takeoff or something, you'll probably see more fluid being passed through the air pumps. But if you do turn off the electrical C1 and C2, then let's see what happens. All right, so I've turned on the electrical hydraulic pumps. So you will see that now there is no supply of hydraulics to all of these systems through the center tank, but we know that we have air supply on C1 and C2. So now we'll try to turn on the uh, C1 and C2 hydraulic switches to auto. So now that it has air supply, the fault lights do extinguish. And if you come back to the hydraulic system, you'll see that since the primary pumps are off, we are able to get all of the hydraulic fluid supply 
uh, through the C1 and C2 air demand pumps. So that's how this system works and that's that's why there's all this redundancy built in here that in case your electrical primary pumps go off, you still have access to all the systems that work through hydraulics through either C1 or C2 pump. If either of those two go bad, they are all in parallel, so the hydraulic fluid will still be delivered, right? The capability will be lower, but it will still be delivered. Now you know how the electrical C1, C2, air C1 and air C2 works. So the only parallel line remaining here is the RAT. So let's go back to the overhead panel and let's turn on the C1 and C2 electric and let's turn off the demand. Well, let's just keep it on auto. Now, the last part is if let's say you are in a situation where none of these are working, you've lost electrical power and you also lost engine power. So the left engine is out. So this is not working. Right engine is out. So this is not working. Right. And you also lost electrical power. So you won't have air either because the engine is not working now what do you do in that situation so in that situation you have one option remaining right which is the uh, RAT or it's called the RAM air turbine now this is a one-off thing so once you unlock the RAM air turbine it, it, it will be deployed and then you cannot put it back in the airframe so we'll do that real quick since we have gone through the whole review all right so going back to the overhead panel you will see that the ram air turbine switch is guarded with a white cover so that you don't accidentally press that and pull the ram air turbine down if you click on this switch it will say unlocked it's kind of loud in here but if you go outside you will see that the ram air turbine is now deployed let's get back inside so it's not that loud so that ram air turbine will basically rotate by just the well, force of the air that's hitting the airplane in, when it's flying and that will lead to um, hydraulic fluid being sucked in and being uh, being supplied to all the critical systems so that you don't lose your uh, so that you don't lose your flap control or you don't lo lose your flight controls right because that's something that is needed at a minimum to fly your airplane so yeah that was a quick summary of the hydraulic system and if you guys like these kind of videos please 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 make sure you like the video and also you subscribe to the channel it's it takes a lot of time and research to make these videos and i would highly highly appreciate uh, you guys sticking by just helping the small channel out i will see you on the next one